Hello YouTubers, okay, it's Christy. It's day two of my dyeing project. Remember, um, we're doing acid dyes and I needed to dye some yarn to match this because I was making this scarf and I ran out of yarn. And so I thought, oh man, now I have to dye some more. So I started mixing up my dye yesterday. And if you remember, it was Ashford dyes and it was a little bit of the navy and a little bit of the hot pink. And by a little bit, I mean probably like a quarter teaspoon of each of those put into my little beaker and then half of the beaker, which I think is over here, half of this beaker that was, uh, what is it, 300 milliliters, um, so half of that, so 150 milliliters was white vinegar, and then just like a quarter teaspoon of either of the other dyes was um, in there, mixed with hot water. So these are the dyes I used. Oh, I didn't use this blue. So I used hot pink Ashford dyes, and I used navy blue. I don't know if that comes up backwards when you see it, but anyways, they're both Ashford. But when I took it out last night, it was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous dark royal purple. It was so beautiful, but it was not dark enough. See, this is, I looked at it and I analyzed this. I said, you know what? This has more navy in it. The other one was just a gorgeous, I should have taken a picture for you. It was very beautiful, but it was a little too feminine because this scarf is going to a man. And so I thought, no, there's no way that I can blend that in there. So I added another, um, made up another batch of this, and I really, I put in like a half a teaspoon of this with, you know, diluted in water, stirred it up, get all your little clumps out, then added another um, 150 milliliters or so of white vinegar, and put it in my designated crock pot um, over here that is only four dies and popped it in there on I think it's stuck on high it's either stuck on a high or auto the little thing broke but anyways I popped it in there for a couple hours and wow it sucked up all the dye so I'm gonna dip this later and show you it's nothing but clear water left in there but this is how it turned out Ooh, la la, it's still steaming hot. Um, I, can you see the steam? Oh, you can. It's still steaming hot, but it's just an enormous amount of uh, beautiful merino dye, but I, merino wool dye, but see, what a, what a great, isn't that a great match? It is, isn't it? Yay! Huzzah! So this will be fabulous. I'm gonna hang this up in this other bathroom over here. So while it's all wet like this, I'll take this skein and I'm just gonna hang it right over where the, um, where the shower head comes down. It'll just hang off there and it'll drip down into the um, bathtub. And I don't have to worry about it um, dripping any dye because I've already checked and only um, clear water drips off of here, see? show you down here it's all clear water so no all of the dye is 100% absorbed into the fiber so I don't have to worry about dye getting stuck in my bathtub because my bathtub is resurfaced and I did find out the hard way that uh, that resurfacing coating stuff that they put on bathtubs it is susceptible to being dyed so if that's the case in your bathroom, um, you might want to be careful. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when your bathtub gets pitted over years, because this is a 150-year-old house. I have the original clawfoot bathtub upstairs, um, and I have a 1940s bathtub down here. And they all got pitted, and so I had somebody come in and just resurface them all, and they just put an enamel over. But that enamel can 
can be dyed. So it's really hard to get it off. So just FYI, when you're dyeing, be careful of where you're drying it. And in the sinks where I use everything are all stainless steel. So my sinks are not gonna get messed up. So just, if you've got an enamel sink, you might wanna be careful um, when you're doing your dyeing, okay? I think that's all that you need to know. This is the final part two of that acid dye project. So what do you need for acid dye? Any brand acid dye, white vinegar, cover it in water, and apply heat and you're going to need you know to get it about 180 degrees for at least 30 minutes i like to keep mine in for you know a couple hours then by then there's like no dye left in the pot and you can always check by just dipping it in and saying to yourself is my water clear why yes there's no more dye left in the dye pot Okay, so you got clear water left, and then it's fine. And then you can um, wash this if you want to get rid of the vinegar smell. It does have a vinegar smell. Um, not too bad, but we'll wash it. And um, and it's good if you want to. You can there's some dye prep um, soaps that you can get over at Dharma Trading Company. It's especially good if you're doing silk, but um, there's some good. Really, actually, I like this Norwex, too, um, because it's pH neutral. Any pH neutral soap you can use, including Dawn, um, to uh, wash your wool with. Just make sure that it's, you're not shocking it into a different, you're not taking super hot and steamy and putting it into cool or lukewarm water. Okay, water temperature's gotta be the same. So if this is hot out of your dye bath, you need to let it cool down to room temperature if you're going to add room temperature water and wash it okay all right that's all happy dying everybody and by dying i mean d-y-e-i-n-g <laughs> okay everybody stay safe and i'll talk with you later bye bye